Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back again with another one of these videos showing the sequence of the end times. And so this one is uh, a bit more like um, interesting, I would say, in the sense that it's coded, but um, you know, it's really cool. And so this uh, Joshua 2 is very, very similar to um, Genesis 18 and 19, um, you know, where the three men appear to Abraham. And so a very similar narrative. And again, it shows the consistency of the way God does things and, you know, sends people in pairs and, and all that kind of stuff. And so we see that again here. And so um, a lot of the verses, you know, in, in the ones that I do like this, it talks about Babylon, and then we know directly that's America or Egypt, and that's America. And here it's a little bit coded because it talks about uh, a woman named Rahab, who is a prostitute. And so Mystery Babylon is also described as a prostitute. And so this is where it's cool, like it's actually, you know, symbolic and it and the sequence still very much holds and fits. And it's incredible. And so in this case, we're talking about Rahab, who has a, a house and is hiding these two um, two spies. But in, in the end times, that's going to be America. And so the sequence still fits and it's, it's amazing. And so um, Joshua 2 reads, uh, the title is Rahab Hides the Spies. And so for people to know, just to quickly summarize the sequence of the end times, it's the elect taken away, two men are brought here, um, you know, Moses and Elijah in America for 1260 days. And then after they're taken away, America is destroyed. And then God returns with the angels and his elect in the Middle East. And so, and then after that, it's the kingdom of heaven. And so um, this sort of uh, starts with the two men, you know, like already here in America and like they're, um, you know, that kind of symbolism and then everything follows afterwards. And so there is a notion and a mention here of deliverance unto death. But um, this, again, is sort of focused in on um, these two men, you know, which in the end times represents the two witnesses. So Rahab hides the spies, um, Joshua 2. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and came into the house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab and lodged there. So now think of this as the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, in America. But in, again, in this analogy, this is Rahab's home. And America is described as a prostitute and a whore and all that kind of stuff. So again, this is exactly the same language and narrative. And it was told to the king of Jericho, Behold, men of Israel have come here tonight to search out the land. Then the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you who entered your house, for they have come to search out all the land. So the analogy also holds, because we're told in Revelation 11 that for 1260 days, they're going to be chastised but not killed. You know, they're going to be protected. And in the end times, it's with their own spiritual power. And here, it's with the help of Rahab, the prostitute. And so, you know, just know that. And so... These government officials coming to try and seek them out is the same thing that's going to happen in the end times. They won't be successful until the very end of it. Uh, but the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. And she said, true, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And when the gate was about to be closed at dark, the men went out. I do not know where the men went. Pursue them quickly for you will overtake them. She's telling them like, no, they went away. Just go. And so she knows that they're hidden. And so this again is consistent with America this prostitute is lying, you know, here it's, it's on the, it's to benefit the, the two Israelites, but it's just like a house of lies. And so she's telling a lie here, but she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with all the stalks of flax that she had laid in order uh, on the roof. So the men pursued after them on the way to the Jordan, as far as the fords and the gate was shut. As soon as the pursuers had gone out verse eight, before the men lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us and all that the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. This woman can also be representative of the mixed multitude, which are going to be here in America and worldwide, who are going to then, you know, understand that these two are from God. And so, and know that they should be feared and all that kind of stuff. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who are beyond the Jordan or to Sahan and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. And as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted and there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord, your God, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. And so this is the God of the Israelites. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that as I have dealt kindly with you, you will also deal kindly with my father's house and give me a sure sign that you will save alive my father and mother, my brothers and sisters and all who belong to them and deliver our lives from death. And the men said to her, our life for yours, even to death. If you do not tell this business of ours, then when the Lord gives us the land, we'll deal kindly and faithfully with you. So again, this is symbolic of people, you know, who are not maybe Israelites, but 
they're part of the mixed multitude, you know, and then understand and want to worship the God of the Bible that they're going to be in the kingdom, you know, and then serving the, the elect. And so this is also consistent with that. <clears throat> Verse 15, then she let them down by a rope through the window for her house was built into the city wall so that she lived in the wall. And she said to them, go into the hills or the pursuers will encounter you and hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Then afterward, you may go your way. The men said to her, we will be guiltless with respect to this oath of yours that you have made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall tie this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down, and you shall gather into your house your father and mother, your brothers, and all your father's household. Then if anyone goes out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head. And so they're saying they're going to return the favor. And we shall be guiltless. But if a hand is laid upon anyone who is with you in the house, his, shall, his blood shall be on our head. But if you tell this business of ours, then we shall be guiltless with respect to your oath and you have made us that you have made us swear. And she said, according to your word, so be it. Then she sent them away and they departed and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. And so even prostitutes know to respect, you know, the, the Israelites. And so um, we'll see, you know, in the times that we live in, if that's the case. Um, but there's always hope. Um, verse 22, they departed and went into the hills and remained there three days until the pursuers returned. And the pursuers searched all along the way and found nothing. And so this three days is reflective of in the last days, it'll be 1260 days. And so when they're killed, you know, and return back to the spirit world, then the two men returned, they came down from the hills and passed over and came to Joshua. So now they're recombining with God's elect and Joshua would be one of them, the son of Nun. And they told that him and all that had and, uh, and all that happened to them. And they said to Joshua, truly, the Lord has given all the land into our hands. And so this is now symbolically Christ returning with his elect. Um, like it says here, and also all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of us. And so this is symbolic of Christ returning with his elect and his angels to destroy everybody, you know, with um, with heat, you know. And so that's an, also not a coincidence. That's in verse 24, um, talking about the elect, you know, 24 is 2, 4, 44. And so... I'll read that again. And they said to Joshua, these are the two spies, truly the Lord has given all the land into our hands. And so this is now the translation of the kingdom where Christ is returning to just destroy everybody with the mark of the beast. And also all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of us. And so this is Christ returning with his elect with the power and instructing to go and um, kill everybody because they have the mark of the beast. And so just literally cleaning the entire earth. And um, so this is again, amazing that um, Joshua 2, even though it's not a, like an end times thing, it has the same DNA, you know, of God. And then so after that destruction, where the elect are returning to melt away everybody in the land, we would expect to see some reference later of the kingdom. And so um, not a surprise that we do in um, Joshua 3, 12. Now, therefore, take 12 men from the tribes of, tribes of Israel, from each tribe a man, and so, and when the soles of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. And so this 12 from every tribe is again, referring to the elect, which are the government, you know, in the kingdom. And so, you know, it's a bit coded language, I would say, but again, you'll always, if you're looking for it, you'll see that sequence, you know, and then it sometimes will be a little bit looser like in here, but um it again to me every time i do this and it's everywhere and you can literally uh, you know i'm planning to probably find this in every single book in the bible some multiple times you know in the bible but um you know this sequence is, is everywhere and so it's always deliverance salvation of god's elect it's always a time of wrath of plagues and then it's america being destroyed and then it's christ returning with his elect to wipe out everybody um who have the mark of the beast so we see this pattern again here in Joshua 2 and 3. And, um, you know, again, gives me more and more comfort that that's the way it's going to go. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.